Thank you for joining this episode of our webinar series on best practices in e-discovery, AI, and digital forensics. Today's session is focused on forensic collections from websites. With digital transformation, the growth in the cloud, and the web being a front end to many data sources, website forensic collections have been a growth category for our digital forensic lab. Website collections span a ton of use cases, like using the Internet Archive Wayback Machine to identify previous contract terms and conditions, prior art or IP infringement, collecting from the dark web to identify custodians impacted by a data breach or any number of other improprieties. My name is Jeff Fugit. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for Lexby, and I'll be the moderator for today's event. We've got a lot of information to cover, so I'll jump right in. Our webinars take place monthly and cover a variety of relevant e-discovery and digital forensic topics, trends, best practices, and strategies. We've got limited seating, so be sure to register early for the sessions that are of interest to you. If you have technical issues or questions, please email webinars at lexb.com and we'll address them right away. Our webinars are available online at lexb.com for viewing via streaming video or downloadable as a PDF presentation or MP3 podcast. You'll find this webinar and a complete listing of other webinars at lexby.com or on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions during today's session, please enter them into the Q&A portion of the GoToWebinar console and we'll answer them after the event. To be notified of future live and on-demand events, please email us at webinars at lexby.com or follow us on LinkedIn. For more than 18 years, Lexby's been helping legal teams handle document intensive cases. Nearly 9,000 legal professionals have come to rely on Lexby. We have the industry's most affordable, full featured DIY cloud based e discovery platform, including integrations with ChatGPT and other generative AI models. We have the industry's fastest e discovery processing and document review platform. And this is critical because being fast means you have more time to build that case. We're consistently rated as having the best customer service and support, the easiest to administer, and the easiest to do business with. We've also been rated by G2 as delivering the fastest return on investment. And as you'll learn more about us today, we have a full forensic lab staffed with Celebrite certified forensic investigators and Magnet Axiom certified investigators who perform full and targeted forensic collections and assist with evidence acquisition. If you'd like a demonstration of our platform, simply email us at sales at lexby.com and we'll get that scheduled for you. Our guest speaker today is Asia Bowman. Asia is a forensic investigator in our state-of-the-art digital forensic lab. I'll let her introduce herself, but before I do that, I'm going to ask for your participation in a couple of polling questions. Our first polling question is, are you seeing an increase in website and web-based sources of evidence in your cases? And while you're answering that, I'll thank you for participating in our polling questions today. All right, I'll go ahead and close that poll. And our next question, are you currently using ChatGPT or other Gen AI models to assist you in e-discovery in your cases? Yes, no, or not yet. All right, and I'll go ahead and close that poll. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Asia Bowman. Asia? Thank you, Jeff, for that introduction. As he has stated, I am Asia Bowman, and today we will be discussing what a website collection entails and how it plays an important role in digital forensics. Just a brief background about myself. At Mississippi State University, I received my Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry with a concentration of forensic science. Then I went on to study at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, where I received my Master of Science in Cybersecurity with a concentration of cybercrime investigations. As I was a graduate student, I worked as a cybersecurity intelligent analyst at Dark Tower in Birmingham, and I was also able to obtain my Celebrate Operator and Celebrate Physical Analyst certification. So in today's agenda, we will be discussing some important topics that includes the overview of digital forensics, different types of collections, forensic tools, 
importance of web collection, website collection, post collection data, website collection metadata, hash values, X1 other features, which is a forensic tool that we use, export options, and some important key takeaways. So with that being said, let's jump right in. So what is digital forensics? Digital forensics is one of the many disciplines under forensic science that involves the identification, preservation, recovery, and analysis of digital media. As a digital forensic examiner or investigator, it is our goal to preserve the digital evidence found in its original form just to ensure that the data remains unchanged and unaltered. So when someone uses a computer or a mobile device, for instance, they will always tend to leave a digital footprint behind which can tell those things such as when they were active on those devices and what type of web pages they visited. And with the digital footprint being left behind, it is our role to recover, retrieve, and preserve that digital data. In on, e-discovery and digital forensics have similar processes, such as identifying, collecting, and preserving data. And sometimes during an e-discovery matter, Digital forensics is oftentimes necessary. <laughs> Nowadays, there are cyber crimes being committed each and every day worldwide. So when it comes to digital evidence, forensic experts can collect, recover, and analyze the data for legal matters. And also, as a digital forensic expert, we can provide the collected digital evidence, which is then organized and can be reviewed within any e-discovery review platform by the council. In the digital forensic world, Digital forensic examiners or investigators will always use forensically sound tools to ensure data integrity and confidentiality. And as I stated before, that digital evidence can be collected and ingested into any e-discovery review platform of your choice. After the collection of digital evidence, a forensic report can then be created and provided by forensic experts, which will detail every step of the forensic collection, analysis, and the export of the data. Also, if needed, a digital forensic expert is able to testify in court to provide an expert testimony and explain the processes and findings more in detail. Yeah. So when it comes to digital evidence, there are different types of digital media that digital forensic examiners or investigators can collect from. The first type of digital media that we can collect from includes mobile devices which includes iPhones, Androids, iPads, and tablets. <laughs> and from mobile devices, the type of digital evidence that we can collect includes text messages, emails, photos slash videos, locations, call logs, contacts, internet history, and so much more. Another type of digital media that we can collect from are computers and hard drives. And from computer and hard drives, we can pull documents, photos slash videos, system files, registry, and deleted data. A third type of digital media that we can collect are external devices, which includes thumb drives, external hard drives, media cards, CDs, and DVDs. And from those, we can collect documents, photos slash videos, spreadsheets, text files, and system files. And the last type of digital media that we could collect from includes cloud and web mail. So this will include social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, some cloud services. So for example, Apple iCloud, Google Cloud, OneDrive, Dropbox, Telegram, and Slack. Web mail such as Google, Yahoo, Outlook, and Microsoft 365 and Exchange. And also various types of web pages that can be collected, which we will discuss more detail here in a moment. Now, some of the forensically sound tools that we like to use here at Lexby are Celebrate, Magnet Axiom, Encase, and X1 Social Discovery. So with the tool Celebrate UFED and Physical Analyzer, this tool has the ability to collect and review, analyze, and manage a wide range of digital evidence sources, which include mobile devices, computers, cloud-based evidence, and open source information. 
And with this tool, it can help us trace back to events that occurred on these devices or any type of cloud-based platforms. It helps essentially build um, a type of storyline to provide during an investigation. A little similar to Celebrate, we have the tool Magnet Axiom, which acquires images and analyzes evidence from smartphones, computers, and more, such as the cloud-based platforms. And with this tool, this helps categorize the artifacts found on these devices and platforms for us to review these items easily. So that way we can tag and export the desired evidence. With the tool end case, this was traditionally used to recover evidence from seized hard drives. So with this tool, it also can conduct an in-depth analysis of user files, which can collect things such as documents, pictures, internet history, and even Windows registry information. Forensic Tool X1 Social Discovery can collect and index data from various social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more, such as Tumblr and YouTube. This also has the capability to index IMAP accounts, so your email accounts such as AOL, Gmail, Yahoo, and Outlook as well as capturing data from website and online sources, which is be the main focus of this webinar. So we would jump into that discussion now. So why is web collection so important? Each and every day, there are users who are either posting on social media platforms or visiting various websites, including myself and those around me. And with this, they can leave behind a digital footprint. And so depending on the case, as a digital forensic examiner or investigator, these web pages can contain crucial evidence that's related to a case. And the type of digital evidence that the web pages can contain are things such as a user's online activities, communications, transactions, or any other digital artifacts. So with that type of digital evidence being found on a web page, this can give us an insight into what a user was doing on their web page. So if they were posting, commenting, liking a post, um, also their social interaction. So if they're communicating with someone on there or even sending a message to a person and also seeing if the user has some type of connection with another individual or a group of entities. So that type of digital evidence found on a web page can be helpful during an investigation that involves either harassment, cyberbullying, or any type of illicit behavior. So collecting a website or a web page can help prove the state of the website at any given time, as well as preserving all of its contents, which can be very helpful to any investigations. As an example, Many months ago, my forensics team here at Lexby had to perform a collection from an estate sales website. So during this case, we had to collect from a specified profile just to show what items that were listed for sale. So not only did the X1 social discovery tool collected from the specified profile, but it was also able to capture the description of each item that was being on sale on their website, how many bids there were placed on each item, as well as the prices for each item. So we were able to collect all of that crucial data from their website and report it back to the appropriate parties. So now with the X1 Social Discovery Forensic Tool, there are different methods that we can use to collect a web page. So the first method that we can use is called a single page web capture collection, which is pretty straightforward, which allows us to navigate and capture a single web page. And after the collection, we can then view, search, tag, and export the desired results. Another method that we can use is called a web crawl collection, whereas we can capture, preserve, and index an entire website or specific portions of the website. <laughs> Along with this method, we can also manipulate the web crawl based on the specified information that's wanted rather than indexing everything available on the website. So again, it's pretty straightforward. So if there's only certain items on a website that is wanted to be collected, then we can just collect those items rather than um, indexing the whole website and collecting everything from that website. A bulk import web collection consists of creating and entering a one-time list of websites that you want the tool to capture, preserve, and index. 
but with this method, it has one limitation, whereas it cannot capture websites or files that are linked to systems in, with an HTML overlay. And what that means is if a website has an HTML overlay, then that website has the ability to either display additional information, have pop-ups on the website, or even having some type of interactive elements that will navigate you away from your current page. And with those elements that can occur, that can disrupt the um, collection process for those websites. And an example of websites having an HTML overlay would be like DocuShare, SharePoint, and Documental. And lastly, if needed, we are able to capture LinkedIn pages. So if there's any type of crucial details or information that needs to be collected from a user's profile or a business page, then we are able to collect from those pages as well. So by using the X1 social discovery tool, after a website has been collected, as you can see on my right hand side of the screen, you can see the preview of the website that has been collected. And for this example, we collected a portion of our Lexi website where you want to submit a support ticket. And from my viewpoint, we are able to view the preview of the collected website as an image, as a PDF, or in a PNG format. And we can choose between any of those formats to view the collected web page. So then we can go ahead and review the web page, um, tag the relevant data to the investigation, and then export the data to a desired format. Once a website has been collected, the metadata of that website will also be collected. And what metadata is, is that it summarizes the basic details about the data. So essentially, it's just a structure reference that helps source and identify unique attributes to the information that it describes. And some examples of digital evidence that can contain metadata would be web pages, spreadsheets, videos, images, and things of that nature. So some information that can be included in the metadata, as you can see on my right hand side of the screen in the screenshot, um, some information that was included from the website collection of the Lexi page can be the account name, the URL of the website, the ingestion time where it provides the date and time where we collected the web page, as well as the page title, which was the support page from our Lexi website. So every time any type of digital evidence is collected, whether it's an image, a video, or a file, each one of those um, digital evidence will have its own metadata, which will provide um, different details about each of those items. Sure, sure. Along with metadata, digital evidence will also contain hash values. And a hash value is a specific number string that is created through an algorithm which is associated with a particular file. So, for instance, if I create a Microsoft Word document, that document would have its own hash value. And if I make any changes to that um, document, then that hash value will also change. So, some things that can change a hash value would be me um, converting the Microsoft Word document to a PDF or going into that Word, Microsoft Word document and changing at least one word in that document and that will also change the hash value. So the importance of hash values is to ensure data integrity so that it can show that a file or any type of digital media hasn't been changed or altered in any type of way. So, as you can see on the left hand side of the screen in a screenshot, we collected another web page, which is a Starbucks here located in Austin. And this shows the MD5 summary, which is a type of hash value. So, within the tool, after a website collection, depending on how much data is on the website, the tool will have various screenshots of the web page. And so with each of those screenshots, each one of those will have its own hash values. And with these hash values, you will be able to see if the screenshots or, like I said before, any type of file has been modified in any type of way. Now that we discuss X1 website collection capabilities, we will now discuss the tools 
other features more in depth. So as I mentioned before, the tool has the capabilities to collect from social media platforms, YouTube, and even webmail. So as far as social media, with Facebook, there are two different methods that we can use to capture a user's Facebook profile. The first type would be single PDF capture, which is as it sounds, just a singular capture of a user's profile page, as well as post level parts, which will collect the um, user's profile that would include metadata, such as the date and time of the post, the author of the post, what type of content that they posted, and the reaction share count to that post. With Twitter, the tool can collect a user's Twitter profile and it will collect metadata such as their user info, their tweets, any type of content that they may be linked to, their messages, and identify their followers and who they are following this way. With Instagram, it's a pretty straightforward process. So since this platform consists of just posting pictures, it is able to collect the posts from a user profile. So it will be able to collect their actual posts as well as posts they have been tagged in. And with Tumblr, it has the potential to collect from both credentialed and public Tumblr accounts. So it will collect the data from a user's profile and is able to index things just as the text posts, their photos, chats, any quotes, links, and video entries from Instagram, Vivo, and Vimeo. However, by using X1, there are some limitations when it comes to collecting certain items from Tumblr. So as an example, if there are any audio entries that are available on a user's profile, the tool as of right now is not able to download those audio entries. As well as it's not currently indexing any comments since majority of the users re rely on a third party commenting system such as Discuss. But as of now, these limitations are being evaluated for a future release. So with YouTube, it's another pretty straightforward process. So as an examiner, we are able to anonymously add the users or any channels within the tool. And then we'll be able to index the user's entire uploaded collection or just um, collect just their individual videos. And with webmail, the tool is able to collect any email items which can be then viewed, sorted, searched, tagged, and then exported to your desired format. So with X1 Social Discovery, it's pretty similar to the other forensics tool that we use here at Lexby, which are Celebrate and Magnet Axiom, as well as having the capabilities to collect from web pages. So along with Celebrate and Magnet Axiom, by using X1 Social Discovery, the processes are pretty straightforward. So if you have used our forensic services here at Lexby before, then you should be um, familiar with the remote collection form. But if you're not familiar with the remote collection form, then it's just a form that we send to clients just to give us details about what type of collection they want us to perform. And on that form, you would just provide us details about what type of platform you want us to collect from, as well as the user's credentials. So if they're using their email and password for a platform, just so that we can successfully log into their account and collect whatever data that you need from their profile. And we will sometimes need a user's phone number just in case the tool wants to send a verification code to their cell phone. So we would have to set up a quick five minute call with that user just to make sure that we can successfully log into their account. And the burning questions that we always receive from these users are, will I be notified when the collection is done? Or can I change my password once the collection is done? And of course you can. <laughs> So once we're done with the collection, we will always notify the user that we are done and they have the option to change their password if they like to. So after a collection has been completed, a client would be able to decide what type of format that they would like the data to be exported in. So with each forensics tool, each tool will have their own export options. So depending on what type of format that you like the data to be exported in, we can then use that forensics tool just to ensure that we can export the data into that format. But as I stated before, most of these forensics tools are similar to each other. So they will most likely have the same export options such as PDF and load file. 
with X1 Social Discovery, as you can see on my right hand side of the screen, these are their export options. So the different type of formats that you can export the data in includes CSV, PDF, HTML, as well as PST format. So the export option that majority of our clients likes to choose is low files. Mm -hmm. And with data low files, it will contain the native data as well as the metadata from the files within the collection, which will make it easy to review and search. And with these low files, they can be imported into any modern e-discovery review platform, such as Lexby and others. So as I mentioned previously, majority of these forensics tools will have this option as well as X1 social discovery. So with that being said, at the end of the day, the client will have um, the option to choose whatever format they would like the data to be exported in. Now we are at the end of the webinar and there are just a few key takeaways that I would like you all to keep in mind. The first one is digital forensic involves the identification, preservation, recovery, and analysis of digital media. And sometimes during an e-discovery matter, digital forensics is oftentimes necessary. So you may come across cases that have some cyber crime involved. So you should always reach out to a digital forensic examiner or investigators to perform their collection for you. When it comes to collections, digital forensic examiners or investigators can perform a wide range of the collections with the help of various forensics tools. So some of the tools that I mentioned during this webinar are Celebrate, Magnet Axiom, and X1 Social Discovery. And the type of collections that we could perform includes mobile devices, computers, hard drives, external devices, cloud, web mail, and even web pages. So just to reiterate why website collection is important is that sometimes web pages can contain crucial information that's relevant to a case, so the type of data that we can pull from web pages include communication logs, user activity, or other types of digital artifacts. So the next thing to remember is that metadata provides details about data. So with the help of metadata, this can prove the state of any digital evidence at any given time while preserving its contents. And also hash value is the fingerprint of file. So every time there's some type of digital data that's being created, it will have a hash value associated with it. So if there's any type of changes within that digital data, then ultimately they would change the hash value. And with the help of a hash value, this would make sure that the data hasn't been altered or modified in any type of way. Other than being able to perform website collections, the Forensic Tool X1 Social Discovery has other features, such as collecting from social media platforms, such as Facebook and Instagram, collecting from YouTube, and even collecting from any type of web mail. Once a collection is completed, then you will have the choice to export the data into the format of your desire, such as PDF or a data load file. And with the data load file, this will include the natives and the metadata from files within an investigation, which can then be imported into any modern e-discovery review platform of your choice. Thank you all for joining me today, and I really hope that this webinar has been very insightful for you all. Thanks, Asia. I appreciate you providing us with those insights into forensic web collections. Now I'm going to take you through some specific Gen AI use cases and how Gen AI can help you navigate all of that website data while you're conducting a document review for your case. I'll be showing you two Lexby products, Lexby Autopilot and Lexby Copilot. At Lexby, we have a Gen AI powered document review service called Autopilot, where you can have those document intensive matters quickly analyzed by any of our Gen AI large language models that will identify responsive versus non-responsive documents. It takes technology assisted review to the next level because it doesn't require nearly as much training and it provides a confidence score and the rationale for the prediction. We engineer the prompts, measure precision and recall, and have found that it performs exceptionally well versus legacy document review protocols and technologies. And on this slide, you'll see document review that was done with chat GPT-4 Turbo, and we're measuring precision and recall. 
here, and then you can see the confidence of predictions. And when you click on any of those bars on that graph, you can actually go into those specific document sets and review them. So how do you solve alphabet soup on the fly? Well, unfortunately, many industries are burdened with a massive amount of acronyms. So with our integration of Gen AI into our eDiscovery platform, you can easily get acronym definitions on the fly during your document review. This not only speeds up your review, but also provides greater context. The Gen AI model will analyze the document set first to identify acronym definitions there and then incorporates its own knowledge into generating the final list. While you're reviewing documents, you can also use Lexby Copilot to score your documents for relevancy or responsiveness. In this example, you can see that we created a prompt asking if a document was relevant to the space industry, the space program, or space travel. We asked for a confidence score on a scale of one to 10, and then to state the reasoning in 35 to 50 words and directed the Gen AI model to put it into a specific format. And you can see in this case, the document that we reviewed was yes, indeed responsive. It came back with a confidence level of nine. And then it explains that the emails discussed a briefing on a space related accident, the impact for the Kennedy Space Center and Florida's workforce, which are directly related to the space industry in Florida. You can run this prompt for a single document, multiple documents, or all the documents in your case. We have pre-engineered prompts and have a great prompt management console that helps you manage, share, save, and collaborate on prompts with your team. Gen AI is also very effective at identifying PII, PHI, and PNI. If you're looking for personally identifiable information, protected health information, or proprietary network information in your website data, or any other ESI, then Gen AI can be a powerful tool to help you get to that data fast. In Lexby Copilot, we have pre-engineered a prompt that you can run to quickly identify these key pieces of information. You can use this to help facilitate redactions or to identify protected information that was improperly handled and disclosed. Another use case of Gen AI and document review is language translation. We've got a lot of IP firm customers that handle cross-border cases. When collecting website data, you can quickly have Lexby Copilot with ChatGPT automatically translate the document into the language of your choice. The fluency and accuracy of the translation is excellent. This next use case is a big one, uh, summarize. With our multi-doc prompt, you can quickly summarize a single or multiple documents that are relevant to your case. It works great on all types of ESI, including depositions. And that's been a feature that was in high demand and a lot of our clients, certainly our co-pilot clients, uh, leverage that extensively. Generative AI really does a great job of taking early case assessment to the next level. You can quickly identify key dates, key entities, capture a summary, and quickly understand the landscape of your case. In our last example of how to apply Gen AI to your website collection, you can ask Lexby Copilot to generate a document chronology of the key events. Again, the accuracy and power of Gen AI large language models like ChatGPT and Claude are exceptional and can help you achieve a competitive advantage. And this leads me to our next polling question. Would you like a demonstration of the Lexby Discovery platform with Lexby Copilot Gen AI? All right, I'll go ahead and close that poll. As I mentioned previously, we've got a state-of-the-art digital forensic lab equipped with the latest tools to help collect the documents you need for your cases, including those websites. 
We perform remote and on-site collections and have performed collections from all kinds of sources, as you can see on this partial list. If you need to find deleted text messages or collect data from sources like websites, Slack, or Microsoft Teams, then we're here to help. And our next polling question is, do you have a digital forensic project and would you like a complimentary consultation? All right, I'll go ahead and close that poll. We work with a lot of litigators and help them solve their e-discovery challenges. Jordan Hallett is a sophisticated litigator running a multi-office firm. Most of his cases involve larger, well-funded opposition. With Lexby, he likes having the chat GPT integration available at his fingertips so he can quickly gain insights into the relevant case documents. David Jones was concerned that he would be outgunned by his AMLA opposition. He quickly realized that Lexby was a great equalizer and helped him build his best case that delivered a winning verdict. Paige Tackett at Thompson Co. needed Lexby's speed to get some productions out the door to meet deadlines. Lexby is lightning fast and gets you from document ingestion to productions faster. Patrick Biggins needed an easy to use e-discovery platform to handle document intensive cases for his firm. I'd like to thank you for attending today's session. We'll be making the following available to webinar attendees, a recorded streaming version, an MP3 podcast, as well as a PDF. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments about this webinar or suggestions for future topics. This webinar is part of the Lexby eDiscovery webinar series. For notices of future live and on-demand webinars as part of the series, please email us at webinars at lexby.com or follow us on LinkedIn. Also, we'd like your advice regarding our webinar series. Please complete the survey at the end of today's session. It helps us continuously improve this program and cover the digital forensic and eDiscovery topics that are most relevant to you. And with that, I'd like to thank Asia for presenting today and thank you for attending. Be sure to follow Lexby on LinkedIn and on YouTube so you'll be alerted to the latest podcasts and webinar episodes and watch your inbox for an invite to our next webinar on best practices in eDiscovery, AI, and digital forensics. Take care.